Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are talking about the Godot open source game engine and more specifically we are talking about the Godot's entries from the Google Summer of Code. Now if you've never heard of Google Summer of Code, I actually did a posting about this back in February if you're a regular to this channel where they were looking for applicants. Basically the way it goes is Google gives a bunch of money towards various different open source projects for them to hire students for the summer between 3000 and 6600 USD depending on your cost of living and you should be presenting a project that can be uh, completed within about a three month time period. You get a mentor on the project in question and basically Google pays you to work on open source projects. And in the case of Google, there were actually several contributions this year, the most ever. In fact, there were eight of them. So they did an update on the Google blog of the progress report. Now, the important thing about this progress report, there were actually two prior progress reports, but this one is most relevant because this is the end game. These projects are basically done or near as to make no difference done. So what we're gonna do is take a look at the various different projects that were in here. Um, as you can see, there are eight of them. I did try this, started off with saying the names of the people and the mentors, and I screwed so many names up that I just started the recording over again. So I'm not going to give you the names of the contributors, but I will link to this document. So if you wanna see more specifics about who did each thing, all of the names and all of the mentors are in fact highlighted. So let's do this in order that they are here. The first one we got is improvements to the visual scripting system. Um, again, the name of the person that contributed is here and then the name of the mentors on the project that, you know, kind of mentored it as it went or project managers as it went uh, are here as well. And the big one here, this one's pretty straightforward. Visual scripting in Godot, in my humble opinion, it, it's pretty much borderline useless right now. And what this did is it made it a lot more useful. So what you've seen here, we've got uh, graph unification, port swapping was added, uh, in graph editable nodes were added. Uh, so you can edit directly as opposed to over here. Uh, you've got right-click menu creation. So you can right-click and get menu of all the nodes that are available. Uh, helper dialog for function creation. So they basically improved the visual scripting language in Godot. Now, uh, hopefully we're gonna start seeing a lot of these things merged into uh, future builds if some of them aren't already in there. So next up, we have the GDScript language server. Again, the name is here and the mentors are here. Uh, this is the integration script editor in Godot lacks features found in editors like Visual Studio Code, Sublime, Emacs, etc. These editors are more popular among developers and therefore many want to switch to them uh, for their current usability. However, to implement core functionality such as uh, diagnosis, register custom symbols, jumping to definitions, etc., a language server structure had to be adopted. For example, the client, say Visual Studio Code, will communicate with the Godot language server to get desired results. What this is going to allow you to do is basically uh, work better with um, foreign IDE, supporting uh, Microsoft's language server protocol, which is supported by Visual Studio Code, which is my personal favorite, Atom, Sublime, etc. And what it allows you to do is do tighter integration between the Godot engine itself and your external editor. So it should make the functionality that you get for working with Godot for debugging and getting details back um, tighter, more, uh, more capable, because Godot itself will host a language server that your editor can speak into. Um, so if you are working with something like uh, Visual Studio Code, it should be a nice improvement for you for the integration between them. At least this is laying the foundation for that. Next up, we have asynchronous cache file access. Uh, this project was to replace the already existing file access buffered class with a more flexible and robust solution for caching IO without relying on the operating system on any platform, including desktop and consoles. The old solution to the problem of cache IO was to use file access buffered. This was a problem because file access buffered only supported reading ahead and did not allow for seeking. Uh, seeking you can think of just like um, search basically. So this is a more uh, robust file system with more support. We got, again, every single one of these has a good rundown of what they went through and the current stasis of the actual project. Next up, we have motion matching implementation using KD trees, uh, motivation, Godot being an open source game engine was built with a never ending wish list of adding new features to it. Motion matching is one of the latest features in game animation, which is quite revolutionary. Using set, um, usually setting up a basic animation system needs a lot of work and time. Even after that, we barely managed to make a perfect one uh, motion matching on the other hand is a method where the computer chooses the best pose for each frame by itself from a huge database of mocap data using some algorithm uh, choose the best pose for each frame and jump to it so basically it is to make um, 
the animation process much simpler by using uh, KD trees and motion matching. Uh, you can read more details of how of uh, the, the process and how it particularly went. So next up, we have interactive music. Um, so this one actually was mentored by Juan himself. Uh, the aim of this project was to implement an interactive music feature to the Godot engine, which consists of adding tempo and beat functionality to existing audio streams and adding two new classes called audio stream playlist and audio stream transitioner. The new BPM functionality worked by setting a BPM to an audio stream and transitioner and playlist are able to count the samples with accuracy, the number of which um, depending on how many beats the user has input either on a stream in playlist or fades in transitioner. Audio stream playlists can play multiple audio streams in a sequence based on their tempo and beats, making this, uh, the class has options for looping and shuffling the clips and can take up to 64 clips. And it goes into a whole lot more detail, but you get a lot more power with the audio stream functionality here. I think some of this actually has already made it in, to be honest. Uh, they do have a bit of a future of where they want to go, but basically they added more functionality and power to the audio system, uh, which is kind of cool in the form of interactive music. So if you wanted to have, you know, things get scarier as your music went on or such, this gives you more fine-tuned control over um, the music's playback. Next up, we have virtual control system integration. This one's pretty straightforward. Um, virtual control system uh, editor integration framework and Git plugin. Virtual control system integration project introduces VCS, virtual control system management from within the Godot editor. And this is kind of ubiquitous now. Visual Studio has it, Unity has it, uh, Unreal Engine has it. Pretty much Git integration in your tool is pretty much a standard feature these days. Currently, we have a Git management implementation for Godot. Um, I think they meant up. Uh, and ready to use. Uh, however, support for other VCS is supported and add-ons for these projects can be implemented using Godot scripting API. Thus, Git management has been implemented in C++ with GD native using libgit2. So that's definitely a nice one, especially if you use version control, which you really probably should be, even if you are working by yourself. Um, and then static analyzer for GD script. For those who haven't read the previous progress report, I'll do a re re quick recap. While making medium to large scale games in Godot, many small bugs start to creep in that can cannot be caught by the compiler. These can only be dealt with manually while debugging. This project was to build a tool to use semi to be used semi regularly regularly, sorry, to highlight these programmatic pieces of code in an automated fashion. This essentially extends the scope of static checks currently just uh, being within each script to operate across scripts and scenes. Uh, seems like they have a fair bit more work left to do, but um, as you can see right here. And then next up we have rewriting Godot's light mapper. Uh, Google Summer of Code project has been a great experience overall. Da, 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 da. I won't go over detail. Okay, just a sec. Well, anyways, in essence, this one was all about creating a new light mapper, and it does not seem that it is ready to be used yet. That said, three months serves as a way to kickstart a project at a steady pace that I could not have afforded otherwise. The basic structure is settled, and the core bits of the new mapper are mostly complete. So this one is still a work in progress, but this is for rewriting the light mapper for Godot. It so that is it. That is uh, this year's Summer of Code entries. Uh, I, I would be very interested in hearing what you think, uh, which of these projects looks the most interesting to you, what on here uh, you're most excited by. It'd be interesting to see how quickly these things actually get integrated into Godot itself, and it'd be interesting more perhaps so to see if Google um, increases their Summer of Code next year for Godot. If not, if it gets out, you, you do have to apply for it. There is a bit of a luck of draw of getting into it or not. Uh, for example, I don't think Krita was part of it. They may have been, they may not, I'm not sure. Uh, but some of the major open source projects don't get into this. So there's no guarantee that uh, Godot will get back into it next year. But hopefully this year was considered successful enough that they will be uh, accepted again next year. There's some good foundational stuff here. And the nice thing is some of the stuff is it's not as sexy as a lot of projects would be. So, it, it, you know, to incentivize people with, you know, money, uh, it's nice so you can get these things in the background. Things like, you know, creating a language server or a synchronous file access. It may not be, you know, as sexy as like a sprite cacher or something along those lines. And it's weird that we have different tiers of sexiness for open source projects. But you get what I'm saying there. When you throw some money at something, you can actually get people to work on more of the plumbing stuff. And hopefully what happens out of this is these people that have worked on it on the summer, they now know how to work on an open source project and they're already working with Godot. So hopefully it encourages these developers to stick around, to keep working. Um, and you know it grows the developer community around the Godot engine. Because a lot of times what you find with open source projects is it's actually just a handful of people doing 99.9% .9 of the work. So the more you can grow that group of people out, the more you can scale out your developer community, the more success you can see as a result. So 
I'm definitely interested on that end, but I'm, I'm again, I'm very curious to see if any of this stuff excites you, and if there is something on that list that you do find exciting, let me know what it is in the comments down below. Also, if you're a student out and seeing this and these kinds of projects, are you interested in going for Summer of Code next year on this open source project or perhaps any others? Let me know those in the comments down below as well, and I will talk to you all later. Okay, see you all later. Bye for now.